In this video, I want to talk about big company problems. For the most part, if you're a software engineer at a large tech company, your life is pretty good. You have really talented coworkers, you get paid really well, and you're going to be working with interesting technology. But there are problems unique to a large tech company that most software engineers are not familiar with. I started out my career as a founding engineer at a three-person startup and then worked my way to being a staff engineer and manager at Meta, working there for almost five years. So there definitely was a pretty huge learning curve when I first got into the big tech environment. In this video, I'll share four of the unique challenges you'll encounter in big tech and a couple ways that you can adapt to this new environment. The first big company problem you'll encounter is dealing with an enormous code base. And the consequence of that is things like code search or opening up a file may not even work. And that took me weeks to figure out how to adapt my workflow for a new environment at Facebook, which had so much code that it wouldn't even fit locally. The background here is that most big tech companies will use something called a monorepo, which means that the code for a bunch of different projects is stored in the same code repository. Facebook, Google, Airbnb, Microsoft all use monorepos. And that means that the repository can be upwards of 50 gigabytes or more and tens of millions of lines of code. Having such a large code base means that your local development environment won't work the same way that you're used to if you're coming from a smaller company. Things like jumping to the definition, opening up a class, or finding usages of a method or function probably won't work. For example, at Facebook, there were literally hundreds of different Android projects contained in the monorepo. And so because that would be way too big to fit into Android Studio, like the IDE, Android Studio wouldn't be able to index all the different projects. The strategy was you would selectively load in modules. So if you're working on one particular part of the Facebook or Instagram app, you would load in those modules, make your changes, and then put it out for code review. And so what would frequently happen, especially when I first joined, is I'd make a change, I would add a parameter to a method, and it turned out that that method was being used in a bunch of different modules, which I didn't have loaded locally. And it would then break the build. And so what you really had to get used to working at a big tech company is using an online tool, which you could trust the results of that a lot more to be able to find a variable or a method that's being used. And you also had to be way more familiar with the CI system, the continuous integration system, because that would really be the test of whether your code compiled correctly and didn't break anything else. The second challenge of working within a big tech company is that you will often be working with abstractions that are unique to that company. And that means you have to be really adept at being able to look at internal discussions and forums and talking to the right people in order to get the help you need. Big tech companies are dealing with problems at a scale that very, very few other companies have to deal with, either in terms of the number of users they serve, the number of developers at the company who are checking in code, or inventing new technologies that are gonna be used in future products. Novel problems lead to novel solutions. And that innovation, that creativity, is what attracts a lot of the best people in tech to go work at a large tech company. Working on and developing new tools and frameworks and even new programming languages can be really exciting, but also really challenging. So if you compare that to working at a smaller company where you're using off-the-shelf technology, you typically will encounter a problem, Google for it, find a relevant Stack Overflow post, and then use that to fit your situation. In a large company, it's not that simple. You might be one of the first teams to be using some cutting edge, brand new API or storage system. And so when you do encounter a problem, you can't just find the answer on Google. You have to go digging through the internal forums, find the right people in order to get the help you need. I like to think about it as having one more path to go down if you work at a big tech company. So for example, at a small company, if you're using some stable tool or API like React or the latest Android, then any problem you encounter is almost certainly going to be with either your code or your approach. The underlying technology is going to be sound. But at a big tech company, if you're one of the first people to integrate with the new technology, it could be that your code is wrong, it could be that your approach is wrong, or it could very well be that the underlying technology doesn't support your use case yet, or there's a bug there. And you have to be able to have enough knowledge and context to dive into that and then give feedback to the people and work together to find an appropriate solution. And so what you find is that the best engineers have that much deeper level of collaboration. They're able to describe very clearly what are their goals, what are the goals of the infrastructure, and then what are the gaps, and how do you bridge that gap to now work together with other teams to find a solution that not only works for you, but also for other teams or other organizations within this huge company. The third challenge, which is unique to working in big tech, is that there are so many changes occurring at any given time. So it's really hard to get a holistic view of what is happening with your feature or your product. For example, at any given day at a company like Airbnb or Meta, you might have an experiment rollout happening. You might have a configuration change, like a kill switch, which is going from zero to 100 to release something. You could have code changes being deployed. You might have a mobile release going out. Typically that happens every week or two. 
or you might have a feature which is being rolled out only to employees or only to users in a particular geography, like only in the US or only in Canada. This adds a lot of complexity to debugging issues. So for example, at a small company, what you probably would do is you would grab the two or three people relevant to the bug or the feature, and then you would think about, okay, what changed? And then you have all the knowledge right there in that room and you can figure out what to revert or what to fix forward in order to address the situation. Within a larger company though, it's much harder to root cause the issue because you could have a change made by a completely unrelated team, which somehow turns out to impact you. My recommendation for new engineers in big tech is to be really familiar with the tooling to answer questions around all of the different possible changes that could be occurring. In fact, what I'd recommend is that you and your team generate a run book, basically a playbook of what questions you should ask every time something goes wrong. Like in my example, the common questions I would ask anytime there was any bug report that was given to me. Number one, does this issue only happen on one platform or all platforms? Is it unique to Android, iOS, or web, or does it happen everywhere? Number two, does the issue happen for everyone or just some subset of users? So for example, it might be only happening for employees or maybe it's only happening for users without a profile picture or like what is the condition which triggers this bug? Number three, is it 100% reproducible or not? And number four, what configuration changes happened around the time when this issue was introduced. And so just being able to have that go-to list of questions will make you way more efficient at finding out the root cause. The fourth and final challenge of working within big tech is that you will have a lot of stakeholders that you have to keep up to date and get their approval in order to ship anything meaningful. In a large tech company, there are unsurprisingly a large number of people, right? And so those large number of people will impact your life in a couple different ways. And I bucket those people into three categories. Number one are other engineers. These are people that you have to convince the tech lead and engineers on your team why the work you're doing is important. And you also, at a very basic level, have to get your code approved, right? The engineers on the team have to look at your code and approve it in order to make a commit and ship it. So you have to work with them pretty closely. The second category of people are all the people who you have to keep up to date and informed. So your manager, your product manager, the designer, other people on the team or partner teams to have to be aware of your work because they're relying on it or they contributed to your work in some way. And finally, the third category is the leadership team. So this is the director or VP of engineering or product who will actually approve your launch. And so you have to be able to work with them and convince them that the work that you're doing is net positive for the company and it's a meaningful thing to ship. And once they approve it, then you can actually celebrate the win. This is very different if you work at a startup where instead of three different buckets of people, you literally only have, the whole company might only be a handful of people. And so many startups that are that early, they will not even have a notion of code review. Like an engineer makes a decision to write a feature, they ship it and it goes out the same day or the next day. And so the code velocity, the ability to ship things is way faster because you don't have all this gatekeepers or this process in order to get approvals. At a larger company, the cost of screwing up a launch or a feature can actually be quite high. And that's why there are safeguards in place in terms of your engineering team, the cross-functional team around you, and the leadership team to make sure that the things that do get shipped are high quality and everyone is pointed in the same direction. And so if you are a new engineer to a big company, you have to get used to a much higher level of communication and collaboration with everyone on your team. These are the four biggest challenges I encountered as I transitioned from a startup engineer to a big tech company engineer. And I think so many engineers are not even aware of the gap in skill set that's needed when you go into a medium or large tech company. And even once they're aware, they are not sure how to address the gap. And that's actually the whole point of the company I'm building, Taro. Join Taro.com. I'll leave a link in the description. And the idea is that you have really high quality, high credibility discussion with top people in tech. Many of them who already work in a big tech company definitely would encourage you to check out the platform in order to advance your career a lot faster. And if you do work at a big tech company, which has a learning budget, then there's a really good chance that you can actually expense the cost of Taro Premium entirely to your company. So if you work at a company like Microsoft, Uber, Amazon, Meta, you can get Taro entirely for free. Check it out and I would love your feedback. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.